Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on this video. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the applications that come with Linux Mint 17.3. I'm doing this video mainly for my mom. I switched her over to Linux about two weeks ago and I put Linux Mint 17.3 on her machine and she has really enjoyed using it and has had very few issues. She called me once to tell me about or ask me of something about the browser but other than that the operating system itself she seems to be having no issues with but I thought what I would do is just go through some of the basic applications in Linux Mint now the reason why I put her on 17.3 is simply because Linux Mint 18 was really new it's only been out for a few days and I thought, well, let me go with the more stable of the two. And uh, I think Linux Mint 17.3 is actually going to be a better choice for her computer. It's one of those small form factor Dell Inspirons that were available about five or six years ago. So what I'm going to do is go through some of the applications that come with Linux Mint and talk about what they do. For those of you who have been around Linux for a while, then this video might seem kind of boring. So if you're already very familiar with the distribution, feel free to move on and go watch Justin Bieber videos or whatever else you want to see. But if you are thinking about coming to Linux or new to Linux, then you might find this useful. And one of the things about Linux Mint 18, the latest version, is that they have gone to uh, some new applications that come with the distribution and they're called X apps and they're basically forks of basic applications that Linux Mint has decided to develop on their own and when I come across things that have been turned into an X app I'll point that out as we go through this and I'm gonna do it in a virtual machine because uh, my Linux Mint installation that I use every day. I've taken some things out, I've added some things, and this virtual machine is pretty much as it comes. I haven't done anything to the system other than to change the theming a little bit and set the desktop up the way I like it. So let's go ahead and jump in and start looking around at what comes with Linux Mint. So I'm going to come back to accessories at the end. We're going to start with uh, the graphics applications. You get the GIMP image editor. This particular application is sort of like Photoshop in that it allows you to create images and it allows you to create layers and stuff like that and unless you really know your way around graphics this might be something that is a bit over your head I know it's over my head I do use GIMP on occasion to add text to pictures to make thumbnails for YouTube but beyond that I'm pretty much at a loss to do anything really good with it you know so anyway going back to graphics uh, we have GThumb GThumb is an application that allows you to import photos from a digital camera and then you can edit those photos you can change the color the saturation you can crop them and it is one of my favorite applications for doing that this is something that has been forked by Linux Mint and now it's an application called Pix in Linux Mint 18 but it pretty much looks and acts like GThumb until Linux Mint develops it to add features that aren't in GThumb and this is a very nice application to use and it's quite easy to use as well so that's what GThumb does we have an image viewer and then we have simple scan and image viewer is just for looking at pictures pretty much it's the default application that comes up when you click on a picture in your home folder 
and the simple scan is a little program that allows you to scan images in if you have a scan uh, a scanner <laughs> makes sense doesn't it so not much more to talk about there under internet we get Firefox as the default web browser have an application called HexChat which allows you to use IRC chat rooms we have the Pigeon Instant Messenger which allows you to interface with a lot of different messing, messaging services and uh, you know you can do all kinds of chats and things like that Thunderbird Mail is the default mail client and my mom is already very familiar with Firefox and Thunderbird Mail she's been using that for quite some time even before I switched her to Linux on Windows and then finally there's an application here called Transmission and what that does is it allows you to use uh, torrent files to download things onto your computer so you would go to a website you would download a torrent file and you would open it up in transmission and then you would be able to download whatever that torrent file happens to point to for office we get the entire LibreOffice suite and this top icon that just says LibreOffice will actually open up a, uh, a screen that allows you to choose what sorts of documents you want to work with so uh, if you want to write a document it will open writer for spreadsheets it'll open calc uh, an impress presentation that's kinda of sorta of like PowerPoint and so if you wanted to create a presentation that's where you would do that there's a drawing program um, there's a database program here as well I pretty much only use the writer on a daily basis but I have some spreadsheets so I use calc as well and I have used impress and the nice thing about LibreOffice is, is that it's about 99 percent compatible with Microsoft Office so if you've been using Microsoft Office then you should have no trouble at all jumping into LibreOffice okay under sound and video we get Banshee which is a really nifty music program and it allows you to listen to internet radio it allows you to find podcasts I really like Banshee I have no music in this machine so you're not going to see anything when I open it up uh, it's actually one of my favorite players I prefer this over Rhythmbox which is the standard player that comes with a lot of other distributions it just uh, it, to me it's just a little bit more polished than Rhythmbox and it is the standard music player in Linux Mint when you close Banshee it doesn't actually close so you have to open your volume control to close it or you can choose it from a menu you can choose quit and it'll close that's so you can have your music playing in the background and then all of the controls are uh, put together with the volume control here in the cinnamon desktop Bracero is a program that allows you to burn optical media CDs and DVDs I actually use it quite a bit because I still use a lot of optical media I know a lot of people in the tech community say that it's dead I say that's total BS <laughs> a lot of us use it out here shut up we have a program here called videos and videos is just a real simple video player it will also play music files any kind of audio file can be played in in videos and it's usually set as the default player when you click on a file this is what will open and then we have VLC media player which is a really nice vi uh, media player for both music and videos and uh, it uh, they just give you a bunch of choices here whichever one you want to use I think Banshee will play videos as well so your choice then under administration we have some things here to take a look at we have the Linux Mint backup tool which allows you to create backups of your data on like an external drive 
and it will also allow you to create a list of the programs that you have on your system so you could reinstall it these would be things that you had added to the distribution it's taking a couple of seconds to open up but this is what it looks like so you would take an external hard drive and plug it into the machine and then this would create backup files so that you could restore them later a very interesting program called disk usage analyzer here and what this allows you to do is see exactly how much space you have available on your drives and if you click on it here it gives you this uh, it's going to go through and analyze the disk it's not going to find much because this virtual machine is just essentially the uh, operating system and the applications that come installed with Linux Mint already so it's it's chugging away here it's going to analyze the disk and once it gets done then we'll get uh, this lovely chart and it shows you all of the directories and what's in the directories and things like that so that's kind of a cool thing to have hanging around this is another interesting mint tool you can actually set the system to not allow you to open up different web pages if you have kids using the system and you don't want them to go to a certain web page for some reason you can just add it to this list and you can block it here it doesn't work terribly well because many major web pages like YouTube Facebook and stuff like that have several addresses and if you don't get them all then it'll still open up so sometimes you have to add several URLs and uh, that little application is sometimes called the mint nanny that is a, a Linux mint specific tool okay back to administration here what else do we have to talk about we have the driver manager this will go through the system and it will see what drivers are installed and whether you have drivers available for the system you notice that many of these applications require me to put in a password to get them to work I don't know whether it's going to see drivers for this installation or not simply because of the fact that I manually installed the VirtualBox video drivers and guest editions so probably won't see anything on the system and it doesn't okay back to administration we have the GDB package installer this is for downloaded files that end in the extension DEB some software you actually download off the internet and then you would install from a deb file Google Chrome is a really good example of a piece of software like that we have a log file viewer this is where you can modify the uh, login screen which incidentally mom is not seeing because her system is set up to automatically log in we have power statistics here here's your printers where you can set them up a lot of these are in the settings as well we have the software manager now what this does is you can look through the Linux Mint and Ubuntu archives and install software from there and this takes a couple of seconds to load assuming that I put my password in correctly which I probably didn't oh no I did it just takes a couple of seconds to get itself together and so if you want to look at web browsers for instance we'll go to internet and now it shows you all of the applications that are available for internet lots to choose from here not every piece of software that you would install comes from the archives like I said some things you might download a deb file to put on your computer for instance like the uh, Spotify client there is a deb file that you can download for that and also Google Chrome 
Team Viewer. Pretty much all the proprietary software that isn't in the repositories, that's where you're going to find it, or you're going to find it in a PPA. But I don't really think that uh, my mom's going to have a whole lot of use for stuff that comes from PPAs at this point. We have the software sources application. We'll take a look at that and here's where you can choose your mirrors. And uh, if you had any PPAs in the system, here's where you could manage them. Uh, this is also where you would hook up additional repositories. Like I said, I don't think my mom's going to have to get into doing anything with that, but you never know. She might have to uh, choose a mirror. So it's quite easy to do. Uh, right now this is set for James Madison University, which is pretty close to me. James Madison is in Harrisonburg, Virginia. And then I think we're using, uh, I think this is a, a uh, university in Vermont that has a really fast server. So if you want to change this or the system prompts you to do so, you just come here and then you click on it. And then a little window opens up and now it's going to go out to the internet. It's going to find the fastest local mirror that has your stuff on it. Uh, I like to stick with James Madison University even though that advanced hosters uh, comes up faster. I found that uh, the advanced hosters, if you see that in your Linux Mint users, sometimes they their mirrors don't get updated the way they should. Just a little note there. And let's see, we have the update manager. Uh, let's look at Synaptic Package Manager because this is one that I do want to show my mom and show you too. Um, this is a piece of software that allows you to not only install and remove software from the system, it will also allow you to reinstall software. So sometimes if you have an application that is acting up, you can open up Synaptic Package Manager, find that application, and then mark it for reinstallation. And this is a bit more sophisticated than using the software manager to install applications. So that's what that does. Anybody who has been watching my videos for a long time know that I, I really like Synaptic Package Manager. It's one of my favorite applications. Okay, just a couple more things to talk about here. Let's go to uh, System Monitor. Uh, this shows you what the computer is doing and gives you a, a real quick, first of all, if it's on file systems here, it will show you how much space is being taken up on the hard drive and how much space is available. If you look at processes, it shows you the programs that are running on the computer and it will allow you to highlight them and restart them and things like that. And uh, then this really is the meat and potatoes here where it shows you what the system is doing, it shows you what the CPU is doing, the memory that's being used, and also what the network is doing. So that is what System Monitor does. And finally, let's see what else we have down here to talk about. I did want to talk a little bit about uh, the users and groups application. Sometimes you have to uh, jump in here and check on something like what group you're in every now and again. Uh, you might run into an application or something like that that requires you to add yourself to a group or uh, something like that. So this is where you would do it. This is all the details about your account. This is where you can choose a picture for yourself. You can do that here. And then there is uh, all of the groups down here. This is an administrator account, so member of a lot of groups. Now, if you have folks on your computer who have standard accounts and don't have access to that application because uh, that application uh, usually requires a uh, password to change anything, an administrator password, and if you don't have it, they have another one here. 
uh, called account details which is just a bit more simplified and this one is available without any sort of privileges to any user that might be on the machine and it's just a, another way to get to some of the same stuff uh, you can't change groups here but what you can change is you can change your password uh, you can change the name on the account and then you can change the picture oh I guess I did put my little face as the picture here I wonder why it didn't come up in users and groups Huh. It's probably because I just dragged the file in to do that. That's kind of interesting. Let's see if I go back to users and groups. Yeah, it doesn't. It hasn't updated the picture here, but it's updated it on the other one. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. So if I come in here, let me just see. If I go in here and go to my home folder, tell it I want to see hidden files. There's the picture that I'm using. Okay, now it's up to date. <laughs> That's because I just drug that little file in there. It said face. A little bit of a digression there, I know, but got me curious why that was doing that. Okay. So we also have an upload manager here. This is a little tool that allows you to upload files to FTP sites. I don't think that's something my mom's going to be doing, but if that's something you might do on occasion, you might want to check that out. It's very simple. It's a Mint tool that does that. It's Mint specific. Uh, most people who actually work with FTP will go get FileZilla. We have Preferences. And then it shows us the places. These are all of the folders in our home folder recent files that have been opened up on the system and that's pretty much it so the next thing that I want to take a look at here is just want to kind of walk through the settings menu there are some things in here that we've already seen flash by that are in the administration and accessories menus uh, here's where you change your desktop background these are desktop effects I ordinarily don't mess with that. Here's where you can set your fonts and set your font size. I usually set it to 1.3. I find that easier to see and I just leave all this stuff alone. Now I've already when I when I installed this on mom's machine, I just went ahead and set all this stuff up. Here's where you can modify the theme and you can go find yourself a theme here, change your uh the you can change the decorations on the window, for instance. Uh, what was that on? It was on Mint X, right? And then you can change your icon themes here. You can change the inside of the window, I guess is the best way to say it. So we can change the colors there. And this will also allow you to change your mouse cursor. You can make it like a a black background mouse cursor and this is where you can change the menu here and you can also jump in here and get a whole bunch more of these so if we come over here look at the available ones you can uh, click on and install any of these particular themes here for the uh, menu and the panel so that's what that does. We have accessibility options. This allows you to change things like turn on a screen reader. And, uh, there's the account details program which I've already showed you. We have applets which are things that go down here in the menu. You can add to that. You can um, change things about the date and time, whether or not you have a 24 hour clock, all that stuff. We have desklets, which are little applications that you can add to the Cinnamon desktop. I never use those. Uh, we have configuring the icons that show up on your desktop. That's what's under desktop. 
and let's see what else is in here that's interesting we have hot corners we have notifications we have the screensaver we have preferred applications this is kind of an important one to know is preferred applications because what this does is it tells the desktop what application to open up when you click on a particular kind of file and um, like by default here for music and video it's set to videos but if you want to use VLC player then you can change it to here so that's what that does also if you want to use a different terminal then you can do that there here's uh, where you can set the system up to do something with stuff that you put in it like if you would put in a DVD you might want it to open up a player and start playing a DVD okay and until you set that stuff it will ask you what to do every time startup applications is an important window to know something about so in this particular setup here uh, I've got it set up to open up mint update and you can also have it load mint upload and uh, the welcome screen you can load that if that's something you need every time but and of course down here we have uh, things for <coughs> virtual box excuse me <coughs> Bluetooth manager displays mouse and touchpad keyboard networking power management power management is where you set the system up to go to sleep and turn the monitor off now I've already set that up but if you want to go in there and change any of those settings here's where you configure printers this is system info in case you ever have to figure out what's going on with your computer it'll tell you Okay. we've looked at the driver manager looked at software sources and users and groups so that's pretty much it for the settings here's some settings for the sound so if you ever need to get in here and hook up a microphone or something like that this is where you would do it and there's a couple of more applications to take a look at here I want to go through accessories uh, a lot of the settings that are in that panel are here as well you can see here we've got um, accessibility account details here's a program that you need to know about its archive manager now what this does is it allows you to open and create things like zip files and in Linux we have tar files and tar gz files which a, a tar gz file is a compressed file which means you take a whole bunch of files and throw it in one file and then you run a compression program to make it actually smaller so if you ever have to create a zip file this is where you would do it matter of fact let's just do that real quick so I can show you how it works so we're going to create an empty document here there's nothing here but just need a file to play with and if I put it in here it's going to ask me to create an archive so let's uh, it's going to put it on, I've already set this to put it on the desktop usually it defaults to your home folder but you can change it here by choosing desktop or wherever you want to put it and I guess we'll just go with that and we're going to make a zip file for this demonstration so there it is so now you can add more files to this if you want to and then you have a uh, a little file that contains all the files you dragged into it so that's a zip file now let's just go ahead and get rid of that so if you receive a zip file and you want to look into it all you have to do is click on it and it'll open up archive manager and now we can choose to extract it and it's going to ask us where we're going to put that particular file and put it back on the desktop so we click extract 
and you see that our file reappears on the desktop. So that's how that works. That's what it does. So that's kind of important to know in case you ever run into having to deal with uh, any sort of archive file. That's the program that handles it. So we go back here to, let's see, we looked at backgrounds, the backup tool, we looked at that. I don't know why Banshee is, oh, we're not looking under all, that's why. All right, we were looking under all, which is fine. Seems to me I would have come across Archive Manager somewhere along the way before that, but I didn't, so. Huh, maybe that's under System Tools. Administration? Let's see. Hmm, that's okay. We can go back to all here. Okay. I think that pretty much covers everything except if I come down here to the bottom there's a couple to talk about under accessories we have the USB image writer and what this allows you to do is take a USB stick and create a bootable stick so you could like uh, put Linux Mint onto a USB stick and then you'd be able to boot your computer off of it. This is a nice little tool to have. It's built right into Linux Mint. And then finally on that list, what I wanted to talk about was the USB stick formatter. So if you have a USB stick and you need to wipe everything off of it and reformat it, they have a nice little tool here that allows you to do that. So that's a real quick tour and I know that there are some of these that we haven't talked about or whatever but there's a lot of applications that come installed with Linux Mint which is one of the great things about this particular distribution is, is that it comes with uh, pretty much everything you need to get the job done and it gives you a good start most Linux distributions come with a selection of applications but Linux Mint is really complete which is nice so this is what uh, the file manager looks like and stop it from showing hidden files now in Linux if you open this up and it looks like this and you see all this stuff in Linux if the file name or the folder name starts with a dot or a period then the system considers that to be a hidden file so you can toggle that on and off by clicking control and H okay so if you should happen to open it up and for some reason like I'm talking to my mom now gang if you know I've been in here doing something with a configuration file and you see this control H will hide everything with a dot in front of it and this gives you shortcuts here to the different parts of your system and it's pretty obvious what goes where and your home folder always takes you back home you can also look in the trash here there's everything on the computer and the, this particular thing is a shared folder that I have hooked up to the system so there you go and that is a, a kind of a tour of the applications on Linux Mint and of course if you don't like the applications you're always free to add more and take applications away that sort of thing I would advise if you are like really new to Linux and watching this video that you don't really remove any applications from the system. Uh, sometimes that can cause a problem down the road. Uh, you might run into an issue where you might remove some part of the Linux Mint system that some other part is actually depending on and then you find that something else doesn't work or something like that. 
So uh, probably a good idea to just add to the system and not take away. Especially uh, there's one little program here that I think the system uses for some of the uh, multimedia handling in the background is that that videos program which uh, in Linux Mint 18 is now X videos that is an X app so if you're following along but you're using Linux Mint 18 and there's a few of these that are different like uh, the text editor for instance we didn't talk about the text editor in uh, Linux Mint 18 that is called XED and here we're using gedit so if I actually do a search for gedit it comes up text editor okay and this is a little application that allows you to write plain text files and usually when you first install it you'll see that you'll in the favorites here and on the panel it will tell you about uh, you know you'll have a, a link to the terminal I don't have that here because uh, it's a keyboard shortcut to get to it alternate control and T will open up a terminal in Linux Mint and so therefore I don't see the need to have a, a shortcut on the desktop so if you want to get to a terminal that's one way to do it alright gang thank you for watching I mean that's pretty much my tour of Linux Mint 17.3 and showing you what some of the applications are and what they do and I hope uh, you got something out of this like I said it was mainly for my mom and I guess we'll wrap it up right here uh, for those of you who are interested in learning more about Linux I would suggest that you check out the links in the description below check out easylinux.com check out easy Linux on Facebook and if you do give it a like and also uh, if you want me to help you get started with Linux I'll be happy to walk you through an installation and get you going that's part of the easy Linux program and I charge a modest fee for that so you can find out more about that by clicking on easylinux.com also check out freedompenguin.com for articles from myself and other contributors and that is just about going to do it for this video talk to you guys again soon